Welcome to this presentation on phlebitis. Phlebitis is defined as an inflammation of a vein, typically presenting with a pain, swelling, redness and warmth over the affected area. It can be superficial or deeper in the venous system known as deep venous thrombophlebitis. A specific type of post-infusion phlebitis may occur after catheter removal. As well, we have another type known as mechanical phlebitis, chemical phlebitis, and bacterial phlebitis. There are several factors contributing to the development of phlebitis. The use of peripheral intravenous catheters, chemical irritants such as drugs or solutions, a poor aseptic technique during intravenous line insertion, a prolonged cannulation or use of a large gauge catheters, frequent catheter movement or reinsertion. Other contributing factors include a prolonged intravenous therapy, poor vascular health, hypercoagulable states, smoking, immobility, advanced age, and the use of irritant drugs, for example, chemotherapeutic agents. In the pathophysiology of phlebitis, phlebitis begins with an endothelial injury triggering the coagulation cascade. This trigger leads to an inflammation and infiltration by the white blood cells. A thrombus formation follows. Chronic inflammation may lead to fibrosis and in deep vein involvement, there is a significant risk of embolism. The key signs and symptoms of phlebitis include redness or erythema, swelling, pain or tenderness along the vein, a palpable cold like indurated vein, warmth at the site. If infectious, there will be a purine discharge present and in the systemic involvement, fever may occur. To assess the severity of phlebitis, we use an INS grading scale to grade phlebitis. We have a grade zero where there are no symptoms, grade one, representing a rhythm at the site. Grade 2 presents with pain with an erythema or an edema. And then grade 3 presents with pain, erythema and an induration. And the last grade 4 presents with pain, arrhythmia, pyridence and palpable cord. Effective management starts with immediate catheter removal provision of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain and inflammation, antibiotics can be administered if infection is present, and use of anticoagulant if thrombophlebitis or deep venous thrombophlebitis is diagnosed. A supportive care includes limb elevation, maintaining of hydration and applying a warm moist soak to promote circulation. Always monitor for complications such as tissue necrosis, infection, and pulmonary embolism. Nursing interventions play a critical role in the prevention and care. Always you need to use a septic technique during intravenous insertion. Rotate the intravenous sites as per the hospital policy. Monitor for early signs of phlebitis. Educate these patients on reporting the pain and redness. And lastly, document an intravenous site condition after each shift.